you were talking about the flow of experience. We usually identify with certain parts of it and we, we say it belongs to us. Um, and then you can move into maybe identifying with the experiences, with the flow of experience itself. Um, but I've heard you yeah, talk yeah. very eloquently about how I think a lot of people can end up f- identifying with consciousness and feeling like that's the end point. Uh-huh. But you talk about it still being a kind of subtle identification happening there. Yes, <laughs> that, that, that seems to be the last holdout of self. <laughs> uh, because even as we begin to see uh, kind of the impermanence of everything else, you know, and, so with some degree of introspection, you know, and reflection, we, we can see that the body is changing and thoughts come and go and emotions come and go. And so maybe we're, through the seeing of impermanence, we begin to get at least you know, perhaps a glimpse of what selflessness means. But generally, people will then still be identified with, well, I'm the one who's knowing all this, you know, the knower of the impermanence. And so practicing in different ways to cut through the identification with knowing feels to me like the final breakthrough. Um, and there are, different, there are different ways of doing that. Yeah, I feel like um, several years ago, after listening to you talk about this, I, I, I felt like I, I gained a, a kind of deeper intellectual understanding through meditative experience of, of reflecting on what you'd, you'd said and yeah, it felt kind of like shifting from maybe saying I am to just is, you know, you just, you just completely obliterate yeah, exactly. the I and just everything just is. Exactly. Just get, get rid of the exactly. identification. Um, yeah, and that yeah, kind of, yeah. I think for a lot of people, in, I think in kind of spiritual circles today, there seems to be, not, not to drag you into metaphysics, but um, a lot of people, yeah. I think, have these kinds of experiences and then think that it makes sense to, to have a metaphysics in which, only consciousness exists. Consciousness is the ultimate and it's what we are. Um, and right. I, this kind of brings me full circle to where we began, which I think the, the sheer pragmatism of, of Buddhism and it's kind of um, through, through um, moving beyond concepts, through getting rid of attachment, I feel like it can give you an intuitive sense of what reality is that's beyond any models, beyond any concepts, beyond any narrative, beyond any metaphysics. You just, you just kind of feel like reality is beyond words and that's kind of where I, where I sit, but I, I, there are a lot of people I think who uh-huh. I think have this identification with consciousness and, and feel it to, to, it kind of informs their metaphysics as well. But um, yeah, do you feel like right. Buddhism well, has informed your, your way of thinking about reality? <laughs> well, uh, it's an interesting question, which I've been very involved, <laughs> I've been very yeah. involved with, because yeah. e- even, w- even within Theravada Buddhism, not to speak of you know, the other traditions of Buddhism, there are different metaphysics and some, some schools of Buddhism really posit that the nature of, we could say freedom or ultimate understanding is awareness and other schools say freedom transcends awareness. So this was, this was my dilemma back when I was trying to figure out the different traditions. Uh, so what I've come to rather, rather than try to, uh, again, decide who's right. Uh, I think the key question in, in either understanding, so we'll, we'll just take the understanding that awareness is the fundamental reality, uh, which is uh, part of some schools of Buddhism. Uh, so the, the key point for me would be, even within that way of describing it, the key point is, is that awareness being identified with or not? You know, so the freedom is in non-identification. And then I'm waiting to become fully enlightened to decide the issue. <laughs> you know, <laughs> is ultimate reality awareness or does it transcend awareness? Um, yeah, just so wait and see. But <laughs> in the meantime, the essence of freedom does not depend on that. It, de- it depends on not being identified with any of it. You know, and that, that's what, in my understanding, that's really where the, uh, the freedom lies. Um, so then again, we could, we could take that very question 
those different metaphysical views about the nature of ultimate reality, we could take those two as skillful means. You know, so as people present the teachings of awareness as being ultimate reality, are they presented in such a way that frees the mind from craving and clinging or not? And the other teachings, does it work to free the mind or not? rather than get caught on who's right. Right. I really like that. because I think um, my, my feeling about the, the, the stories we tell about the nature of reality, because we can never really know for certain, and we're always kind of reaching beyond our, our limits to some extent, I think they often serve a kind of emotional function. We feel out what feels right to us. And this is as yes, true for, yes. for you know, um, fundamentalist you know, relig religious people who have certain yes. metaphysics through to scientists. So certain scientists who become nihilists and, and I think because of their own emotional issues projected onto reality and say reality is terrible and hostile. And that's another, <laughs> that's another kind of yeah, yeah. some way comforting story. And I think that the, yeah. I, I feel like when it comes to this metaphysics, if you don't have the kind of the practice of non-attachment or the practice of figuring out what, where it is that you're subtly trying to fulfill certain emotional needs through attachment or aversion. Um, I think that's, I think there's a really powerful, um, they, they should really go hand in hand, I guess, metaphysics and meditation, <laughs> in, yeah, in yeah. my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's why I like the pragmatism of just that right. very brief phrase, liberation through non-clinging. So that we can, just, you know, we can just uh, look at our minds to, to the extent that we can. Okay, is, is there clinging here in one way or another or not? And that can be very subtle, of course. So, and that's why ongoing practice is needed and that's why Chanel's frame is so good you know sudden awakening gradual cultivation because there are so many subtle aspects of um, delusions still in the mind <laughs>